I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor Sandra Mazer from Mount Sinai Medical School, who's also chair of the Women in Cell Biology Committee here at the ASCB. Sandra, welcome. Well, first of all, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. Really appreciate that. Glad to be here. So the role of the uh, Committee for Women in uh, Cell Biology, what, what, are you going to be all, what are you going to be getting up to this week? Well, we have a very busy week at ASCB. Uh, we essentially run a program each day of the meeting. Uh, we're an incredibly active committee, everybody contributes, and the things that we are doing this year, uh, our Saturday workshop, it consists of a panel that we're co-sponsoring with the Education Committee in order to help people prepare for uh, applying for and succeeding in a job in a primarily undergraduate university and teaching position. That's today. Tomorrow we have our uh, awards and mentoring theater. Uh, Whitby, the Women in Cell Biology, gives out two awards. One a junior award for a truly outstanding junior uh, scientist who's usually within the first seven years of an academic position. And this year, uh, the winner is Sophie Martin from the University of Lausanne. And then we have a senior award from Marianne Broner from Caltech, not only for her excellence in science over many decades, but the, the degree to which she has been a very effective mentor to others. We follow that with a mentoring theater in which prominent cell biologists make fun of themselves in order to provide lessons to, and how do you deal with difficult situations, in this case, mentoring others. Uh, so that's on Sunday. Monday is one of our really important events, the career roundtables and mentoring. Again, you can see the mentoring flows through all of this because that's one of our major roles. And these mentoring programs affect both women and men. And so our career mentoring roundtables usually has about 700 people uh, divided up into tables of 10 in which each one is led by an experienced and a leader in cell biology uh, dealing with topics having to do with biotech or intellectual property, how to negotiate, how to get a job. And so um, that's Monday and then on Tuesday we have a Whitby networking event that invites everybody to come and meet and tell us what their issues are, how we can help them and how they want to work with us. So how have you seen the role of women in cell biology change over the years? The Women in Cell Biology as a committee has just continued to be very active. Women themselves in cell biology, in the American Society for Cell Biology, since the establishment of the committee in the early 70s, have been highly represented. And that was one of our goals in establishing the committee. Uh, essentially, if you look at the presidency, of ASCB, it's almost alternating between men and women. And similarly on our council, women are highly represented. And, um, and it's not that we are perfect. We fall back into the same areas where we are concerned about others, with underrepresentation of women in symposia speakers and many symposia and leadership in other organizations. And this is one of the things we attempt to do through the Whitby Committee. And how does the committee do, how does the committee sort of sort that out, if you like? If, if you perceive that there is an issue that uh, you're underrepresented in, in a particular panel or symposium, what would you do about it? At ASCB, we speak up <laughs> and we're heard. For example, yesterday at the council meeting, the, we were presented with uh, a draft for a future program and um, I applied my skills as a quantitative cell biologist and determined that there were too few women in proportion to those in the field. And um, the, the person who was responsible said, give us some names, and that's one of the things we will be doing at our committee meeting today. It's natural, we've seen this, it's been documented recently in a PNAS article that Joe Handelsman was a senior author on that shows that we all, men and women alike, carry implicit bias. And in this case, it is that we tend to think of men as our scientists. And so it requires us to become aware of this and to remember when we have the opportunity that we can also come up with the names of truly outstanding women scientists who are appropriate. 
uh, one of the things that we're doing in Whitby is we have put together a list of speakers who are available who have been essentially vetted because they've been symposia speakers or mini symposia speakers and they are women who people might not think of when they're organizing uh, meetings. And yesterday at council, we decided that we would send this out to every member of the American Society for Cell Biology. And that provides opportunity for younger women? Especially younger women, because often there's that one woman that everybody knows because she's gotten every award. This is to move down to the younger women, but also as a result to say, let's look at the whole younger generation. I think almost everything we do, although it's women in cell biology, affects both the women and the men, especially the ones who are coming up. My final question is, how important is it in science today that uh, we have a broad scientific community working on uh, problems? Thank you for asking that question, because the importance of diversity cannot be overestimated in the way we do science now. Science is very rarely, the, the science with a major impact is very rarely done by a single author. It's by a team. And the teams that are the most effective in doing the most impactful science are those with the greatest diversity. So this can be technological, techniques of various sorts and perspectives of questions, but it also has been shown that when you have women and minorities on a committee, they bring a different perspective and increase what's considered to be the collective intelligence, the ability to come up with creative solutions to questions. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today, and I hope you really enjoy the conference, so thank you. Thank you so much.